All right, yeah, as I already said, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to present the, this presentation on age, sex, and diseases of dead people. Um, it was yeah, prepared by Nina Richards, who can't be here in person, but she's following us online. And just before we start, um, the presentation is going to show images of human remains, mostly bones, so please consider not taking photos and putting them on social media. Thank you very much. And um, in the following presentation, I would like to put up for discussion how methods of bioarchaeology can be integrated into the H tools and what advantages such an interdisciplinary approach can bring. To this end, I would like to address what bioarchaeology bio actually is, what results can be expected, and how research in the humanities can benefit from them. Physical or biological anthropology is a subdiscipline of life sciences or biology that deals with humans, non-human primates, and their environment. Fields of activity include hominid evolution, primatology, human behavioral ecology, and of course, bioarchaeology. Bioarchaeology is the study of past communities through the analysis of human remains, which usually come from archaeological excavations. So the material under, uh, under investigation are mostly bones and only sometimes soft tissues, mummies, for example. And um, various statements about the life of the person can be derived from the bones, which cannot be recorded by any archaeological or historical methods. For example, the individual age at death, the body height, or the biological sex of a person can be estimated from bones and teeth. Structural changes um, also provide information about diseases and habitual stress, such as workload during the life of the um, individual. Those results can be supplemented by further scientific analyzing methods, such as stable isotope analysis, DNA, or protonomics, which allow for an even deeper insight. The results, also in combination with archaeological or historical research, allow for the reconstruction of individual biographies as well as insight into entire communities, which would not be possible without this interdisciplinary approach. First, I would like to briefly introduce some bioarchaeological methods. It should be emphasized that not everywhere the same methods are used. The methods presented here are widely used in Austrian research, respectively in Central Europe, and the use of the same methods by multiple researchers allows for comparability of the results um, but as already mentioned, in different regions, the, me the methods um, may differ too. Um, the methods of age and death determination depend primarily on the life phase of the individual to be determined. So for children or sub-adult individuals, different methods are used than for adult individuals. For sub-adult individuals, the development of the teeth is the most important criterion for age, age determination. The length of the long bones, as well as the fusion of the child's bones, are um, also providing information about the possible age at death. In adult individuals, teeth are also used to determine age, but here tooth erosion rather than tooth eruption provides information about age at death. In addition, specific features on the pelvis, for example, and changes thereof occurring over time can be included in the estimates. The same applies to the occurrence of degenerative changes in the large joints. The results are entered into appropriate forms during the analysis and an individual age at death is determined from the data. To find um, paleopathological changes, the human remains are examined microscopically and if necessary microscopically. Any changes in the bone are recorded these can be compared to the patterns of still occurring pathologies as well as comparative material from other individuals of the same time frame. In this way, many diseases can be detected, including caries, calculus, abscesses of the teeth, nutrient deficiencies, inflammatory changes such as osteomyelitis, or bone fractures, of course, also infectious diseases such as syphilis or rickets. Sex is determined for grown-up individuals primarily on the skull and pelvis bones. Various features are checked by the researchers and assigned a certain value between minus two, which would be hyperfeminine, and plus two, which would be hypermasculine. 
for example, the glabella or the arcus superciliaris or the uh, mandible on the skull are assessed as well as the angulus pubis on the pelvis. A weighting number provides information on how reliable a feature is for determining sex. The observed number as well as the weighting number together allow the calculation of the individual sex number or in German it's called Geschlechtszahl which then in turn allows statements about the biological sex of the human remains. This method was first published by Denise Ferenbach and colleagues in 1980. It must be taken into account that the results are only a statistical calculation. This becomes particularly clear if one considers that female individuals can also be a rather male facial features or men can, for example, have wider hips. A more reliable result is provided by biomolecular test results such as DNA analysis, for example. They are, however, associated with highly signif significantly higher costs. They are invasive and cannot be carried out for every burial ground. One more brief digression on sex and gender in this paper. Sex is understood in the context of this paper as biological sex in the sense of a bioanthropological analysis result. A classification based on the aforementioned Geschlechtszahl is translated into the classes female, probable female, indifferent, probable male, and male. These results do not have to correspond to the chromosomal sex of a person, which is double X for female or XY for male, which can only be determined by DNA analysis. In no case, however, can bioarchaeological methods provide information about the self-perception of a person as well as the reception of the individual by different communities. Um, yeah, why is the approach presented in this paper new? Um, applications that allow simple and standardized recording of such examination results are lacking. Data is still often collected on paper and stored in folders However, these data sets are scarcely made available digitally. In addition, personal databases are being developed, but they remain limited to individual projects or scientists, and there are no open source and open access databases for bioarchaeological research results or an interdisciplinary evaluation of burial grounds, which are uh, publicly available. Even though in the Anglo-American sphere, database systems for forensic anthropological research are available, they are not suitable for bioarchaeological data. Instead, they are used for investigations um, dealing with recently deceased individuals and are primarily available to law enforcement entities. Other methods than bioarchaeological are used to identify the deceased. In many cases, they are not publicly available and use by researchers is often limited or not possible. While there is a lack of database solutions for recording bioarchaeological data during and after processing, some presentation sites exist. One example would be the Welcome Osteological Research Database of the Museum of London or the Archaeological Data Service, um, the Digital Repository for Archaeology and Heritage in the UK. Um, Open Atlas would like to close this gap. It's a database system that is actively being developed to acquire, manage, and edit data, primarily from the humanities and related um, scientific disciplines. And because bioarchaeological data is so usefully, or so usefully complements archaeological research, the database is now being expanded in this direction. The software itself is um, developed by a small interdisciplinary team at the Austrian Center of Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage and the Natural History Museum in Vienna. Um, particular emphasis is placed on open source during development, so all the code we develop is um, available on GitHub under open licenses and only open source third-party software is used. So the database system takes care of today's requirements regarding data standards, data management, and aims compliance with the FAIR principles. The um, data model of Open Atlas is based on the CDOC CRM, which is an international standard for cultural heritage documentation, and we also mapped the bioarchaeological branch of Open Atlas to the CDOC CRM. Um, the archaeological strand is structured in the same way as an archaeological excavation presents itself. A cemetery consists of one or more graves, in the graves, one or more stratigraphic units can be found, 
and uh, also individuals, and the individual can be associated with multiple finds, and of course, the individual can consist of multiple bones. So in a nutshell, this is how we map the data within the Open Atlas database. Since not every um, researcher will have the time and resources to deal with the complex data model in detail, the software offers a solution. The data is entered via user-friendly forms that can be customized and mapped to the data model in the background. In addition, these forms offer the possibility to, of linking one's own data record with further information, images, bibliographic information, as well as links to controlled vocabularies such as geonames, Wikidata, Getty AAT, and so on. Um, for recording bioarchaeological data sets, there are two options. Human remains that have already been analyzed can be entered by using the human remains form. Here, for example, uh, measurement data for all bones can be stored, which can then be used to determine the body height. Information on pathologic, pathological changes can also be recorded here separately for each bone and linked to images or references. Statements about the individual based on more than one bone, such as age at death or sex, are noted in the form for burial. A dedicated tool is provided for documentation during skeleton analysis. The same data that is normally recorded analogously by the scientists can be entered directly into the database the same way. Here, for example, the form for sex determination, according to the aforementioned Ferenbach publication, is shown. And the scores assigned to the various characteristics are entered. And the so-called Geschlechtszahl is calculated automatically. And while Open Atlas is primarily developed for the acquisition and the management of research data, it's not intended for the presentation of data to other researchers and the interested public. Instead, this is covered by front ends developed for the various projects. These are tailored to the specific research questions and topics covered in the research collaborations. They use the complex data sets stored in Open Atlas and are either developed by the Open Atlas team or by the research projects themselves. A big advantage that allows for easy data access is the Open Atlas API. And one example um, that uses Open Atlas for a presentation page or the data from Open Atlas for a presentation page is Tanados. It stands for the archaeological, uh, sorry, the anthropological and archaeological database of sepultures. It's a project carried out at the Natural History Museum and the Austrian Academy of Sciences, and it was led by Nina Richards and me. And um, the goal of the initial phase was to record all so far published archaeological and anthropological data sets on early medieval cemeteries from the area of present-day Austria. And um, with the completion of the first phase, more than 450 cemeteries with their associated graves, burials, finds, and osteological data are presented online. It's freely accessible and explorable for everyone. Uh, you can find it at tanados.net. Currently, we're working on expanding it to further regions and further time frames. The presentation page offers the possibility to view the data as a catalog, so Basically, everything that's published can also be um, viewed in Tanados. It offers the possibility to perform queries, spatial queries, for example, like here, the sex distribution within a cemetery. Each cemetery has its own dashboard showing basic parameters on archaeological finds and features, like here, the age at death distribution or the sex distribution. And you can also do inter-site um, comparisons in order to yeah, compare different sites to each other. Um, it offers various possibilities to um, explore the interdisciplinary data. You can carry out global searches, like for example, search for graves that contain words, or pathological changes, even combine them like here, um, search for graves of female individuals that contain finds um, of gold or gilded finds. And we also included anthropological data and presented in the Tanados web interface. And it's also included in all these features. 
For example, where the chromosomal sex is known due to DNA analysis, it's shown here, which is very useful because you can't determine the sex of a subadult individual so clearly, but with um, DNA analysis. As already mentioned, different methods are used in physical anthropology by different schools, and they are also taken into account in Tanados. The best example is the determination of body height and its presentation. Um, for uh, the determination of body height, the preserved long bones are measured in a set way, and depending on the method chosen, different bones are used and then multiplied by coefficients to reconstruct the body height. Depending on the method used to calculate, this can lead to different results. Um, if one wants to compare different sites with each other, it's therefore important that the results for the body height were calculated with the same formula. To facilitate this, Tanados offers the following possibility. At the moment, five different methods are available with the methods after Bach, Breitinger, Pearson, as well as Trotter and Gläser. If other projects or scientists need further calculation basis, a simple extension is also possible to do this. This allows a high flexibility and for many different scientists to use the presented data for the further research. So once the bones are measured in this set way, um, Tanados calculates on the fly the average body height of the um, very individual. And then also for the whole cemetery, so you can, bind them, you can combine them on an individual level or even on the uh, level of the whole site. And to conclude my, or let's say Nina's presentation, um, I want to emphasize on the following points. By processing and presenting interdisciplinary data, more far-reaching statements are possible and combining anthropological and archaeological data sets provides new insights into the, li uh, the lives of past communities. Open Atlas and Tanados can show that the methods and results are easily edible to DH software. Nevertheless, DH applications to these issues have not yet been developed to a great extent. All research data shown today and all data acquired in the future are and will be made available online for everyone as open access in accordance with the FAIR principles and on a state-of-the-art presentation site. And with these points, I want to thank you very much for your kind attention. And if you're interested, visit tanados.net and openatlas.eu for further information. Thank you very much.